She was young. She was beautiful. Everyone wanted her. You have the whole world at your fingertips. Seize the moment. She went from nowhere to everywhere in a New York minute. Honey, you can do whatever you want now. She was living a dream. What do I want? It became her worst nightmare. Based on the real-life story of supermodel Gia Karanji. You're on the cover of Vogue! I can't believe it! A non-stop jet fuel jag into the stratosphere of fame, money, and passion. Sex was really easy. Love was a hard thing to find. And a daredevil plunge into a world beyond reach. Hello, this is John Ricciuti at Mainline Public Television and Radnor Studio 21. And today our guest on Faces of the Mainline is Rob Fay. I'll tell you about Rob Fay, but first I want to tell you about Gia Karanji. That's what the story is about. Gia Karanji was a famous fashion model from the late 70s to the early 80s. It is believed she was discovered by Joseph A. Betrellis, fashion icon photographer of the era. We are at the home today of Joseph A. Betrellis with our guest, who's chapter 28 in the book, Born This Way, the story of Gia Karanji. Joe met Rob Fay while Joe was visiting Gia at the rehab center in Eagleville, Pennsylvania. Rob, how did you meet Gia Karanji? I met Gia Karanji in uh, May of 1985 at Eagleville Hospital, uh, which was a drug and alcohol rehabilitation center. And uh, we hit it off right away. We became really good friends and kind of became uh, uh, like, you know, recovery buddies, you know, because it was a whole new world for us. I had never been in a rehab or anything and, and uh, I think Gia had been to detoxes and stuff, but this whole new thing about recovery was working out for us both, and and uh, we had a good time. She was real easy to talk to. She was she was uh, a lot of fun, great sense of humor. She came crashing into a room, and uh, she had to fill out some paperwork, and uh, she. Uh, made a mess, dropped some stuff, and we laughed and joked about it, and, and that's how I first met her. Um, and there were, there were rumors that she had been this model, and she told me that she modeled, and I didn't, I didn't realize the extent of her modeling. Um, but the only people that, that I ever saw come to visit her were her mother and um, photographer Joe Petrellis, uh, whom she introduced me to, and... Uh, Joe and I have been friends ever since, you know, we've had a great, great relationship and he's a lot of fun and I don't know, <coughs> when I'm with him I kind of catch her spirit, you know what I mean? A lot of, you know, a lot of in the moment good times happen. Did you know that she, that Joe Petrellis kind of had a lot to do with her career? Well, I do now, I didn't know it at the time, you know, and like I said, I didn't realize the extent of Gia's career, you know, I, I mean, I didn't, I didn't know that she'd been on, you know, this top shelf cover girl, you know, to me, she was just, you know, she wasn't the kind of girl that if you're walking down the street, you'd say, oh my God, that's a top model of the world, you know, she was just an incredibly attractive, more from the inside than outside person, you know, she was just very warm to me, I don't know if she was like that to everybody or, or how anyone else perceived her, but. I just felt like right at home with her right away. Was she very modest about her career? Yeah, yeah. Uh, she never bragged about it or anything. And Like I said, the way I found out she was a, how big a model she was, was we went to her mother's house one time and she didn't have keys. And I had to break into the house to get in there. And I was a little questioning, questioning her a little, you know. Um, you sure this is your mother's house? But it, and I knew it was her mother's house because when I came in through the kitchen window, 
and I walked to the living room to open the front door. That's when I saw a wall, entire wall of covers, Vogue and Cosmo covers from around the world. And that's when I found out she was a, what time, you know, what level she was modeling at. And, uh, and then she brought me, you know, she brought this box out with all these different pictures and started telling me stories and, um, you know, it was pretty cool. You know, she had a pretty wild life for a young girl. Besides Joseph A. Petrellis, did anyone else, and her mother, did anyone else come and visit her? Not that I can recall, um, no. You know, and I, I, I kind of thought that um, odd, you know, because even I had a couple people that come to, came to visit me, you know. And, um, but the only ones I ever saw there were her mother and, and Joe. Were you sexually intimate with her? No, no. Um, not that I didn't want to be, you know, but she told me she was gay, and I guess that was a boundary that I respected, you know. I just didn't, just didn't figure into the friendship at that time, you know. Um, you know, which I was grateful for, you know. I was trying to live this new life and, and uh, you know, be sober and be a responsible person, be clean and... and uh, you know, trying to do the right thing, and that wasn't part of the right thing at the time. Did she talk about her addiction? Oh, yeah, yeah, she talked, uh, well, we had so much in common, you know, because we were the same age, and then we grew up with the same stuff, and uh, and we both were, you know, had these horrible behaviors long before we got high, you know, and then all of a sudden we were getting high and kind of justified all the terrible behaviors of, you know, self-centeredness and stealing and whatever to get whatever I wanted. And, and uh, you know, it was like a, a whole learning experience, you know. But there were a lot of things that, that every, anybody has to do to maintain a, a, an addiction that you don't really want to do, you know, but you got to do what you got to do, you know. People got hurt all along the way. You're an addict in recovery. Mm -hmm. Do you think that Gia really wanted to be sober? Yes, yeah. I know she wanted to be sober. I know she was living a sober life when she died. You know, so basically she wins, you know. She died sober. And that's the message that a lot of people seem to miss, you know. Um, the book talked about it a little bit, Stephen Freed's book. But the... Uh, the HBO movie didn't mention anything like that, you know, it just made it look like she died this miserable life, you know, but that girl was happy. The last year of her life, she was happy and fun and funny, and uh, even though she was sick in the face of horrendous stuff like that, tragedy, you know, she would try to live, get the most out of every day, you know, and she did. What did you think of uh, Freed's book? Um, well, I, I don't know. I, I really... It got her name out there, you know. It, it was as close to the truth as I know. Every, anything that I, that I um, knew was, was true, you know. Um, it, uh, I'm glad they made a movie of it, you know. I'm glad that he brought all this you know, out into the light, um, you know, but there were, you know, some inconsistencies and, and things that I know now that I didn't know then, um, you know, but I, I got a lot of respect for them. The part that you don't understand about this whole Gia thing is that Gia's death saved thousands of people's lives. A lot of people look up to that book. You know, and a lot of people look up to that story, to her whole story. They found her story through that book. Right. To me, it's okay because she's reached out from the grave to help young people. And she's done it. And I know people, and I could bring them right here and sit them on that couch. And they would say, Gia Karanji has changed my life. Which I only hope I can say that when I'm dead. Or, you know... I only hope I can live a life that'll help other people, right? That's what it's all about. That's what it's all about. Now everybody's friends with Gia, 
you know, oh, we were friends to the end and blah, blah, blah. Where well, were all the yeah, friends where were when she passed away? Where that's, were they? Where was Scuvula, the hairdressers, the makeup artists? Well, that's what all I these say. Stylists. Where were all these people? They loved her so much. Well, where were they? Where? And we know they were moving on with their life, you know. But, yeah, that's painful to see these people make these claims that they were so tight with Gia, but they didn't have time for her when she was down and out, you know. Um, yeah, that was painful for her, too. I know that was, because she tried to call those people, and they didn't call her back. And that's why when people say, oh, was Gia, like... Obsessed to be a model or proud to be a, you know, I think she just thought it was like a part-time thing She had to do to go to the party, you know, I don't think she ever planned to have a career in modeling or or anything like that she just You know she got lucky and, You know wrote it out You know if it wasn't for Joe, I don't care what they say about Maurice and all that and you know uh but if it wasn't for Joe, she probably wouldn't have gone that route, you know. She probably would have had just a, you know, regular life girl in Philadelphia. And the disease would have got her and killed her and we never would have heard about any of it. You know, and she might not have helped anybody. But I know that her death has saved thousands of lives. And that's why I still talk about her today. People have always reached out to me afterwards to, uh, a after she died, to, you know, after the book came out in the movie, um, back when uh, it was MySpace, it wasn't Facebook, you know, and even before then, people would reach out and want to talk about Gia, and I went around to schools and, and um, you know, youth detention centers or whatever and, and talked about her and, and about the hazards of, of the disease of addiction, and you know, uh, because that's, she asked me to do that, you know, she said, she wanted to make a video, she wanted to sit down with a camera and say, you know, tell the kids, don't, don't, you know, don't do this, you, there's other ways to get help, there are ways to get help, you know, and how to recognize it and all that, and uh, we never did that, we never got to do that, and that's probably the big regret of my life right there, is that I never made that video. You actually met Gia in rehab? In rehab, yeah. Did you know who she was at the time? Um, I, people had said she was a model, but she downplayed it, you know, she said it was a very small part of her life. She was really in pretty bad shape at that time, huh? Um, well, she was recovering when I met her. Um, she looked like Gia. Um, she wasn't falling apart. She didn't know she had AIDS uh, at that time. She wasn't physically sick. I mean, she was sick as much as coming out of, coming out of a heroin addiction. So many people, all the industry all knew about her. She was a star, but many of us found out about her. There was a lot written, and then there was this movie about her life, uh, which seemed so... Um, it, there was a lot of seduction, a lot of temptation, and a lot of um, almost self-sabotage. Mm -hmm. She wanted to get a message to other young girls. Well, she wanted, uh, she wanted girls not to try to emulate the what they see on the covers, you know, that, that, that there really was no glamour. And the, uh, the ironic part of it is that they ended up with the heroin chic mm -hmm. emulating the Gia as a junkie. Mm -hmm. yeah. And uh, it, it's just very painful to see that, that that's what they were, that that's what they're doing. What have you done with your life since rehab? Oh, what have I done? I've had a life second to none, clearly. <laughs> Um, I got married and I had two babies and um, my wife relapsed and went back into heroin use and uh, I ended up raising the babies myself, um, which is, yeah, it's kind of a horrible story really, but, uh, you know, their mother died from the disease of addiction and they both have this disease and, and uh, it's, 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 it's brutal is what it is, you know, I mean, I could tell you stories, Joe's walked me through parts of my life that, you know, I, I, I don't know what I would have done without him, you know, without having somebody like that around, you know, um, he's seen my whole life, and, and he knows that, you know, it's tough, it can be tough, you know, um, but I've, uh, 
I worked as a mechanic basically my whole life and, and uh, now I live down in Florida and I spend most of my time riding motorcycles and going snorkeling. <laughs> you know, so life is good. But G is always there and I still go to, I go to psych wards, I go to uh, behavioral treatment centers and, and uh, um, more often than not I do mention Gia and it's amazing because I get kids that you know, 14, 15 year old kids and, and 40 year old women and, and, and men that, that know her story, you know, it's pretty cool, you know, and uh, she's really uh, gave me the gift of, of being able to, to meet a lot of interesting people and have some great times, you know, even, even though she's not here, you know, I feel like I share a part of her life with, with some of the cool people that she left me. It's pretty neat. You know, my dad died before I got sober, and uh, I never really had that whole father figure thing, you know. And uh, and Joe was more like a, I mean, we were more like running buddies, really. We had some good times. Um, but he had lived longer than me, obviously, you know, and had been through a lot of a lot of other stuff. And he found just found ways to comfort and put my head in perspective of what was really you know, uh, what was really important, you know, and, uh, and I never had anybody like that before, you know, they, it just, uh, I don't know, Joe was a lot like Gia, we just meshed, you know, as soon as I met him, it was, you know, like I had known him my whole life. When you think of Gia, what do you think about? Um, I think of the summer of 86, I think of, uh, everything being fresh and, you know, new because I I had just come out of a drug and alcohol induced decade, and uh, you know I just think of uh, hope. You know, and things will get better. How are your children? <clears throat> well, like I said, they suffer from this disease, and uh, you know, some days they're good, some days they're not good. You know, and and it's been a brutal brutal nightmare, you know, and if I could, uh, if I could give my own life to eradicate the disease of addiction, I would die today, you know, because I've had a life second to none, you know, but to, the only, uh, the real downfall about being in recovery, is only one downfall that I've found, and that's that I can't just give it to somebody, you know. You got to earn this thing. You got to come and get it. You know, I can't just give it to you like magic and, and you're clean and, and your life is better. You know, it's, uh, that's the downfall of, of being sober is watching all the other people suffer. And I can't, I mean, I can do my best to pull them out. I can be there, you know, but it really, it's an inside job. And, and, uh, and that's, that's the only downfall of being sober. You know, other than that, I live like a rock star. Got some nice motorcycles. My life is good. A mile from the beach, you know. Uh, the day I found out she died, we had talked about it. We I obviously knew it was coming, you know. And uh, um, mostly, well, I was angry. I was angry at God, you know. Why you got to do something like this? I finally meet somebody cool and with friends and... You know, it was like, like I said, it was like a whole new thing to have a friend like her. And the thing that had bothered me was that she had been ostracized by not only the people in New York, but the people in her own family. You know, she couldn't stay at her mother's house anymore because of, she had AIDS. And um, people that were in the in the meetings that we were going to, the recovery meetings, they didn't want her there. You know, and. Uh, um, but we went to those meetings, you know, and I challenged them to call the police, you know, to come. You want us out? You've got to call the police, you know, and they never did, you know. Um, the, uh, I just missed the whole, the day she died, I, I just knew that I, that, that was going to be a different, from that point on in my life, everything was going to be different. I would never meet anybody like her. You know, but she would always be there, you know, and I, and I, um, 
I had uh, stood up for her when she needed somebody to stand up for her. Did you go to her funeral? Yeah, yeah. Did Joseph Petrals go? Oh, yeah, yeah. Joe was there, and uh, that was it. There weren't a whole lot of people there. Um, her family? Yeah, her family was there, of course, a couple of friends. Um, um, How about the people who made millions of dollars off of her? Were they there, too? No, nah, they were. I don't know where they were. The Hamptons or something, I don't know. They weren't there, no. Um, no, they weren't there. And and I knew that, well, Gia had gotten over that pretty quick when she realized that people weren't calling her back and, you know, there was no real, you know, friendship there or any kind of loyalty, you know. But then again, that's business. That's, it's a business world, you know. And uh, now you hear people on the Internet how they're talking this and that and they were all best friends to the end and all that, you know. And, um I don't know where those people were, you know. I know where they weren't, you know. They weren't with Gia, and they weren't answering her phone calls, you know. She was a good person, you know, incredibly good person. To this day, she keeps an eye on me. She used to call me Gus. And I said, why do you, why do you call me Gus? She said, because I like that song. And she used to call me up and t ask me, what are you doing? And I said, I'm here laying low. She says, why don't we go and hop on that bus? And then she was very comical. She was fun to be with. I would bring out the brighter side of her all the time. With me, she'd laugh. I had a Rolls Royce back then and she used to love to drive me around in it. And we always, we go up to New Hope, we go here, go there. I had a lot of fun with her. A lot of respect. When I look back, the only thing I could describe Gia is that she was a free spirit. That's it. If you know someone in your family or you know someone that you think is suffering from an addiction problem, say something, try to get them help. There are people that do suffer from addiction and there are places to go to to get help. I hope you found this very educational and informative. Thank you very much.